Hello and welcome to my new video. It's nice to see you all after a while. In this video I will be talking about things that I forgot to mention and things that some of you suggested in the comments. Let's begin. One thing that I forgot to mention is a push attack. It is an attack that you can perform right after pushing. You can perform this attack by holding the block button and then holding the attack button. This attack is usually pretty fast and on some weapons it has special properties. One example of a push attack having a special property is on mace and shield. This weapon has no armor breaking and is generally weak against armor. That is unless you use the push attack. The push attack on this weapon seems to have armor breaking because it's capable of doing damage through the armor. First example for the special attack that I want to show you is for Billhook. The stagger of this attack is so strong that it can even stagger Chaos Warriors. Another example of special attack is Rapier with Brace Pistol. When you press the middle mouse button, Salt Sparrow uses the pistol. This attack has unlimited ammo and its damage is decreasing significantly the more far away the target is. This attack can be really useful against gutter runners. You can also use this special attack while blocking. Another example is the shield and spear. When you hold the block and press the middle mouse button, you can hold your guard and attack the enemy at the same time. Be aware that this attack also depletes your stamina. You can see which weapons have the special attack when you hover over your weapons in your inventory. In my guide I said that you can heal 200 people at a cost of only one medical supply. What I didn't explain is how you can know that you are wounded. If you get down once, you can be revived by your teammate and you will have grey filter applied. This grey filter is an indication that you are wounded. And if you get down again, with the filter still active, you will die. So, if you have two members of your team who are wounded, meaning they have the grey filter, one of them can take the medical supplies and heal the other wounded player. That way, both wounds will get healed and both grey filters will disappear. Of course, only the player that will be healed will get the HP from the medical supplies. This trick is used on Zealot quite a lot because it will clear your wound, but it will not give you any HP when you heal someone with them set medical supplies. Did you know that you can mark your weapons as favorite so you won't accidentally scrap them? Favorite weapons are marked by the little green heart and are put at the top of the list of all of your weapons. You can make your weapon favorite by hovering over the weapon and pressing F. I also want to recommend some settings. First of all, I will recommend having player outlines always on. That way you can see your teammates even through the hordes. I recommend putting equipment and talents privacy to public, so others can see what build are you running with. Uh, people can also suggest some enhancements of your build. If you have it private on purpose because you want to avoid the toxic behavior on some players, I totally understand that, but I still think that you should have it public and just ignore the toxic behavior of some idiotic players. Next thing that I want to recommend is the camera movement on weapon swings set to either low, lower or the lowest. This will make the usage of some weapons a lot easier. Two examples are the glaive and the dual daggers for Carillion. Here you can see the comparison between the normal and the lowest setting. I also recommend having enabled the detailed UI. This option lets you see how much HP you and your teammates have left in numbers. It also shows the numeric amount of ammo of your teammates and cooldown of their abilities. The kill confirmation crosshair 
is also very useful because you can know for sure that you killed your enemies so it will make you more efficient in the long run. If you have trouble running the game smoothly, you can try to enable the AMD FSR 1.0. You will suffer a little loss in image clarity, but you should gain some FPS from this setting. It's highly dependable on your PC configuration though, so just try it out and see for yourself. It also works on NVIDIA video cards, even though it's technology created and named by AMD. If you don't see these settings, it's probably because your GPU doesn't support this technology. So at the end of my guide, I was recommending classes for new players. I recommended class for every character except for Sienna. The reason why I did that was that I think that all Sienna's classes are not new player friendly. I personally started playing with this with Sienna, knowing little to nothing, I didn't perform well. Some of you told me in the comments that I should have recommended the class for her. The class that I'm recommending for Sienna is the Battle Wizard. This class is excellent at horde control, sniping elites and specials and dealing damage over time. For Battle Wizard I recommend that you use the Flame Sword or the Dagger with the talent that gives you temporary HP from staggering enemies. That way you can get full bar of temporary HP with just one swing. For the ranged weapons I recommend using the Bolt Staff, which is excellent at sniping specials and elites. I also want to recommend the Beam Staff. The Beam Staff has one little secret though. When you are holding the left mouse button, you can actually press the right mouse button to deal massive burst damage. So if you get used to do this, I think it's even a better option than the bolt stuff. Also, you can easily revive teammates with your career ability. If you have double teleport talent, you can actually teleport while reviving. Just remember to hold E. Thank you so much for watching, if you like the guide give this video a like, if you don't want to miss any videos from me don't forget to subscribe and if you want to see my first guide there will be a link in the description. See you in another video.